Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So in today's video, y'all, I'm going to finally be doing my freedom video. I talked about freedom and rights in my previous upload that was unplanned, and I will link it somewhere if you guys wanna check it out, but I did post something on my community tab. It was a poll, and I asked you guys which um, video you would prefer seeing first. It was either this video or the gun video, and it was over 2,000 votes, and the majority of them were for a freedom video. And so yeah, this video is just going to be talking about some observations I've made regarding freedom in the United States and Germany, how they are different, and my two cents on the matter. So with all that being said, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to have a discussion, you guys, you're more than welcome to down in the comment section. I'll be down there checking everything out with you guys. So for me, I personally think that each country has a redefining moment for freedom. For Germany, I feel like it's more on the after World War II timeline and a lot of stuff in Germany, milestones and stepping stones have happened during that time because it was such a monumental event and time in the country and for the world. And in the United States, we do have monumental times as well. World War II was big for us too. We had our civil war, um, but I think for us, it's more continuous, I would say, um, because we're fighting all the time to figure out what our fundamental rights are, what our fundamental freedoms are. Germany, it's pretty grounded for the most part. And in the United States, like we can't agree on what is a right, what is a freedom, what is not, just by the Supreme Court decision that was just recently, last week, and I decided to look up the definition in German and in English just to see. I assume that they would be similar because every other definition I've ever looked up, like cat's a cat, <laughs> it's like a four-legged animal, feline, <laughs> with pointy ears. That's not the definition of a cat, you guys, but you get what I'm saying. They are very similar. They have very similar, similar synonyms and antonyms, but with freedom, I thought it was interesting that there were some core differences, and so I'm going to be reading the definition of freedom in English and freedom in German. And so in English it says that freedom is defined as the absence of necessity, coercion, or constraint in choice or action, liberation from slavery or restraint, or from the power of another, independence, bold, capitalized, underscored, the quality or state of being exempt or released, usually from something onerous, onerous. I don't know what this word is. <laughs> and then freedom in German is defined as the Zustand in dem jemand von bestimmten persönlichen oder gesellschaftlichen als Zwang oder Last empfundenen Bindungen oder Verpflichtungen frei ist und sich in seine Entscheidungen ähm, nicht mehr eingeschränkt fühlt. Unabhängigkeit, Ungebundenheit, which directly translated sort of similar, but like I said, there are some core differences. And I found these core differences in the synonyms. When you look up synonyms for freedom in the United States, it says autonomy, independence, liberty, self-determination, ha ha ha, joke. That is really a word. I just find it to be a joke and hilarious that that's in there. Self-government, sovereignty. In German, you have words like Eigenständigkeit, Eigenverantwortlichkeit, Freiheitlichkeit, and Freizügigkeit. And the biggest light bulb for me was the Eigenverantwortlichkeit sort of means personal responsibility. We don't have this in the English language when it comes to freedom. There's not much being said or defined regarding personal responsibility. It sounds like a very individual term when you're looking at it because you hear personal and something personal is individualistic. But when you're applying it to the whole society or the whole country of Germany, which I feel like a lot of people do, you'll understand it's a very collective term. And so in Germany, freedoms are usually seen as things that are shared amongst everyone else because if they're not shared equally amongst everyone else, then they can be seen as privileges. Freedoms can only be freedoms <laughs> when they are equal and available and accessible for everyone. The difference in the United States is that we place a lot of emphasis on I, me, my, and mine. I have my rights, I have my freedoms, and we directly correlate that to something that is very personal and individual to us. Not really taking into, how do you say, mine, that we are a nation, we are a country, and there are 300 plus other million people with us that have the same 
you know, rights and freedoms or will be afforded the same rights and freedoms as us. A good example, in my opinion, for this, it might not be a good example for you, is voting. Voting is seen as a right and freedom in Germany and the United States. But when you look at the percentages of people that actually show up to vote in Germany, I believe it sits at around almost 80% upwards of almost 90% in some years. In the United States, we sit at around 50 to 60%, which is relatively low. And I always wondered to myself, why? I mean, aside from the issues that we face when it comes to voting, I made a video about this, you guys. And I think freedom is one of the main reasons why there is such a big discrepancy of voter turnout being so low in the United States when comparing it to Germany. Because a lot of people, they will say, well, it is my choice. It is my freedom, my right to vote but I don't necessarily have to vote. I choose not to do that. It's over. You know, it's a very individual, selfish decision. And in Germany, a lot of people realize that it is their social responsibility to vote, to put people in charge, to make the best decisions for their country. Eliminating the issues that people, you know, the hurdles they have to jump to be able to vote or the feeling that they are helpless and not being able to vote, something totally different. I know people that just choose not to vote because they didn't want to go on the day. They would rather go do something else or they had something else planned and it's not important to them. And when you start digging a little bit deeper than the surface level, you start realizing that in Germany, you have a very collective society. Still, there are individualistic, selfish tendencies, but as a whole, it's a very collectivist society. And in the United States, we're a very individualistic society. We talk about the constitution, we talk about freedoms, we talk about rights in the United States and how those are so important to our, how do you say, underline of who we are as a society. But when society is constantly pushing out that it's every man for themselves, or a dog eat dog world, or you have to push for yourself, you have to fight for yourself, no one's gonna take care of you, no one's gonna help you, it's only you for you, it doesn't match. <laughs> Freedoms and rights and you know everyone being equal and everyone being afforded the same things with that type of societal mindset does not work. And so granted, does Germany have its flaws and its ticks where maybe sometimes it could be a little too collectivist in my humble opinion? Yes. But it's also nice knowing that I live in a country where people are willing a little bit to inconvenience themselves for the greater good of society. And I could not say, or I cannot say the same thing for the United States. But I wanna talk about something that was a phenomenon in my comment section. It was mostly under my gun video. And it was how Americans always pointed out they have less, so we have more, if that made sense. Or our freedoms are more because they have less. You see Germany not having any guns or everybody doesn't have the freedom like we do to own a gun in the United States. So our freedoms must be better. And, you know, maybe many years ago, I used to think like this as well, but slowly, surely over time, you know, freedom for me is not something as trivial as owning a gun. It's being able to go out into society and not worry if a crazy person is going to shoot me. But the next thing I wanna talk about is capitalism and how straight, you know, pro-capitalism does not promote freedoms or rights, nor does it promote equality in any way, shape or form. And like I said, if we're not promoting equality when it comes to freedoms and rights, then we are getting into privileges that are not afforded to everyone. Capitalism in the United States has caused boundaries and restraints on our freedoms and rights, which is pretty funny because a lot of Americans will use capitalism as the pillar of freedom, making money, earning money. But the hilarious thing is, is that it's a counterproductive um, idea when it comes to freedom. But I'm not necessarily saying that capitalism is the worst thing, but when it contradicts your foundation of freedom and rights for your citizens, then it is a bad thing. Something that was very interesting for me when I first came to Germany was when I was watching the news and I was having to navigate and decipher whether or not the news was um, biased, <laughs> if it was propaganda, if it was very right-leaning, very left-leaning. I had to make sure that I was getting information that was relatively neutral for the most part because in the United States, we have all these news outlets and granted there are neutral news outlets, but we had so many and still do have so many news outlets where information is so skewed. And that's because they're very private, money-making, capitalism, you know, 
organizations, companies pushing to win ads, to win money. And so even our information, our freedom to information, our freedom to access information, to have access to information that is not biased, is tainted in the United States. And the highest bidder wins, the monetarily correct wins, not the politically correct, not the morally correct, not the, what is it, factually correct. None of those things win. And that trickles down into other areas of living in the United States or life in the United States. We have the freedom to choose what we want to eat in the United States, but it's tainted by capitalism, putting a McDonald's on every single corner and adding sugar to every freaking meal that we eat. And then having the fast food industry, the sugar industry, and any type of unhealthy eat eating industry lobbying against certain laws and regulations for healthy food. We have the freedom to walk, bike, take trains, drive cars, to any destination in the United States, but it's tainted by capitalism, allowing the automotive industry to crush anything that might include a better, more inclusive infrastructure. We have the freedom to get sick, but capitalism allows our employers not to pay us when we're sick. We have the freedom to get pregnant in the United States, but capitalism allows no one to give us paid maternity leave. And this isn't to say that Germany is perfect because it is not. But there is a line that is morally, like I said, factually, politically correct, societally correct, that should not be crossed as to not harm people in the process of exercising their freedoms. And I know that for some people, the freedom to get sick isn't really a freedom. The freedom to get pregnant isn't really a freedom. That's a different video for a different time though. But these things our rights and freedoms afforded to us as individuals and people. And I just think to myself, if we can't even protect something as simple as getting pregnant or being sick, what are we doing? We don't really have freedoms then. And all of this to say, how are they different? In Germany, it's seen as a personal responsibility to be able to have freedoms and rights. And in the United States, it's more something that has been granted to us by the constitution, by Sky Daddy. If you don't know who Sky Daddy is, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We see it as something that has been granted to us because we are the blessed Americans of the world, the United States citizens of the world. I don't know, we've been handpicked by God to have these unlimited limited rights and these unlimited freedoms granted to us. Our freedoms and our rights have little to do with responsibility and have little to do with others. We don't think of others when it comes to our freedoms. We think of ourselves. I sort of look at it as like a rowboat or a rowing race. I don't know anything about rowing you guys, but in Germany, let's say you have a rowboat, six people. In that rowboat, you have six people that have different fitness levels. You have rows that are broken. You have rows that are better performing faster than others. You have people that have nicer um, suits on. You have people that don't have nicer suits on. And at the end of the day, you're all working together. Um, it may not be perfect, but you're working towards the finish line. That's your team stuck with them. In the United States, you have people, they're like, I don't wanna be on the team with that person. Well, I want that seat. That's a nicer seat. I want that row. It's a nicer row. I don't, I'm not fit, so I don't wanna work that much. I wanna stand outside. I don't wanna be in the boat with those people. And it's a race. It's not necessarily a race against Germany and the United States. It's a race to see who can get to the finish line. Spoiler alert, <laughs> United States isn't gonna get to the finish line because we're too busy trying to figure out who's better, who deserves more than the other person when we're in the same damn boat together. <laughs> you are only focusing your freedoms and your rights on making your life better for yourself and not really thinking about making your country better for yourself and for other people and the collective good. You're not free. You're not doing the right thing. You're being selfish. But yeah, I'm gonna cut it off there, you guys, because this video is getting long and I'm starting to rant and I don't wanna do that. But I do have to say when comparing the United States and Germany, the main thing is that in Germany, it's more wholesome, collective approach to freedom. In the United States, more selfish, more individual. And the thing is, I'd much rather have 80 plus million people standing behind me, having my back, than working against 300 plus million people to try to put myself at the top. That's something that just sounds dreadful <laughs> to me and for me. And so yeah, thank you so much for watching you guys. Love y'all, have a wonderful day and bye.